Dude here, back again with another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. Now, this video has been pretty highly requested among the community, and I was looking forward to making this video because I was one of the first people, one of the first people in the world to complete Abyss without Aegon, Nick Fury, or Doctor Doom. So this video will be an overview of the path that I took. I took the easy path, the yellow path that started with Thing. What I did for each fight, what I thought were the hardest fights with my team, some of the easiest fights with my team, and my overall impressions of the of the Abyss. So, starting off uh, really early here, we go to Thing. So, Thing, he was... He was interesting. Thing was an interesting boss. I kind of liked the concept of Thing. You know, it's there's no abyssal node on him. It's just it's just a big bad 2.6 million health thing. It wasn't as bad as you may think, but it wasn't as fun as you would not think. That was I worded that in you know, interesting way. And nevertheless, uh, Thing was kind of an intermediate boss. If I had to rank him out of Three, one being easy, two being medium, three being hard. I give him a two. He wasn't really that hard. I got him down in, I believe, three revives with Guillotine. So I made some some good work in the Thing matchup, and I was very happy with how it ended up. And I was able to get the kill with Guillotine and transfer the soul or transfer the combo meter to the next fight, which was actually a very enjoyable fight. Omega Red. So. On the scale, 1 to 3, I would give Omega Red a 1. Super easy fight with Guillotine. 1 revive. It was really quick, really simple. Uh, me being, you know, Guillotine being a robot definitely helped because I didn't have to worry about taking any of the death spore damage. And it was just really easy to control the fight because Guillotine's a tech champion and Omega Red is a mutant. And I had the class advantage and the damage output was really nice. And I think... There's potential for a solo if you run suicides on Omega. So Omega, with my team, really easy. And just a disclaimer, my the team that I was running, I was running 6-star Geese in 2099 at rank 2, 5-star Human Torch at rank 5, 5-star uh, Domino at rank 5, 6-star Red Hulk for the Domino Synergy, and then Symbiote Supreme at rank 5. That was, that was my squad. And neither Domino or Symbiote Supreme were awakened. So, keep that in mind. Moving on to the third fight on the path, the first fight where there is a legitimate abyssal ability, you know, uh, an ability specific to a certain character, and that was Quake. Quake was kind of a fun time, to be honest. I somewhat enjoyed the fight with with Guillotine and Domino. With Guillotine, if you paired up the crit soul and the special two right, you just got rid of all her uh, earthquake charges and you didn't have to worry about them. With Domino, most of the time she's critting anyway, so just spam heavy. That fight with Domino, spam heavy, and Guillotine, kind of that combination, was not bad. I'd give Quake a 2. Excuse me, I'd give Quake a 2. She was pretty, pretty solid, pretty solid. I had a good time against Quake. I may have just gotten lucky, but I, I thought I, my, uh, my runs against Quake were pretty good. And Domino put in a lot of good work. I had a run... With Domino, that took off, I think, 25%. She went from 52 to almost 25. So it was a good run. It was a good run. Moving on to the first cosmic matchup of the Abyss. And this is why I had to bring Symbiote Supreme. We've got our girl, Medusa. Medusa, I would also give it two. There aren't many ones I'm going to give out in this kind of video because there weren't many easy, you know, easy fights, uh, but Medusa with Symbiote Supreme, really simple, the staggers definitely put in a lot of work, if I had Symbiote Supreme awakened, this fight would have been really, really easy to manage, but I did not have Symbiote Supreme awakened, but I got through it anyway, Symbiote Supreme just wrecked so many of the Cosmic Champions on this path, except for the one that is coming up very shortly, so Symbiote Supreme for that Medusa, really easy time. Next up, my first solo in the Abyss, we have Mephisto. Mephisto, I'm going to give a 1, just be due to the fact that Human Torch with the pre-fight can solo this fight very easily. 
Mephisto was really easy to manage. He didn't have any persistent charges, which means no regen. Human Torch with the pre-fight, easy, solo, 83 hits, get in the bin. Enough said on him. Now to my potentially least favorite fight on my entire path, Captain Marvel Movie. This fight's getting a 3. I did not enjoy this fight at all, mainly due to the fact that Symbiote Supreme has a constant, infinite power gain, which is very detrimental to his damage output in this matchup, due to the fact that in this particular instance, having too much power is a bad thing. So Symbiote Supreme, with that power gain, that's bad. Now granted, I probably could have been throwing special ones, and that would have nullified buffs and dealt more energy damage, but still, the special one cycle, if there were staggers on, the staggers would grant him more power, and then he'd be pushed to a special two, special three. It was just a really, really bad time against Captain Marvel. So she was definitely one of the hardest fights that I had to go up against on my first run. I don't know if I would say the hardest, because obviously, you know, the Collector's supposed to be the hardest, but I actually enjoyed the Collector. But, excuse me, we will get to him when we get to him. So, after Captain Marvel, we have Ghost. Ghost was a nice uh, relief from the hustle and bustle of Captain Marvel. She was just such a big pain, so going into a fight, you know, going into a fight like Ghost and being able to build up Guillotine again with the 100 hits, it was a good time. So I'd give Ghost a 1. She was pretty, you know, straightforward, pretty easy. Just had to manage her power correctly. And if you were running Guillotine and you had one soul left, you didn't use one soul, if you accidentally push her to a special 3 and you um, just use your special 1, power drain. Yeah, so Ghost was an easy time. It was a great build up for Guillotine. I was pretty happy to see Ghost after Captain Marvel. So, yeah, Guillotine did great against Ghost. Now, Another one of my least favorite fights, but it was actually, now that I know how to manage the fight, seems interesting, seems maybe a bit enjoyable. We have Iron Man Infinity War. Iron Man Infinity War was kind of a, a whole team fight. Not many of the fights on this path were whole team fights, but Iron Man Infinity War was one of them. My main damage dealer, excuse me, was Human Torch. Human Torch put in so much work against this guy, and once I figured out his kind of rotation and being able to build the smolders and, and hitting all those reparries to build the temperature, it was somewhat of enjoyable, an enjoyable fight up until he got to 15%, then he started gaining power, and since he has that never-ending armor buff, he's always going to auto-block, or no, I'm pretty sure the armor buff that he has doesn't count towards his auto block, but once he gains one of his molecular armor stacks, then auto block and power. But the passive armor does count towards his power gain, which is so nice. So nice. Iron Man, definitely getting a 3 from me. Probably more manageable if I had Void, because Human Torch and Void on that fight pair very well together. Human Torch can do the bulk work, the heavy lifting, and then Void can come in at like 20% and swoop the kill. So hopefully that I that hopefully I will be able to do that in the future. Hopefully that dream comes to fruition. Next up, Joe Fix It. Another interesting fight with my team. Remember, not running Aegon, so can't just bulldoze through this man. Joe Fix It was a very fun and interactive fight. The power gain was a little annoying at some points, but for the most part, Joe Fixit was not as bad as you may think, just because the debuffs that he generates are either willpower healing or only deal a slight amount of damage to you, and the buffs that he generates are very minuscule at most. The only annoying part about Joe Fixit is he has the potential to regenerate at the beginning of every fight. You have to fight Joe Fixit three times. Three times. Not once, not twice. Thrice. And that regen is a big regen. It is 
20% maybe of his max health. And in the Abyss, with 5.7 million health champions, that's crazy. So, Joe Fixit, I'd give him a 2. I'd give him a 2. If I had Aegon, probably something like a 1, because Aegon just absolutely runs through him. But, uh, yeah, Joe Fixit was not that fun in the long run. Domino and Gilly were my main attackers for Joe Fixit. But Human Torch did put in a decent amount of work as well. Alrighty, moving on to more of the latter half of the Abyss. We're getting down to the bottom of the map. We have Mordo. Now, Mordo was a bit of an interesting fight, a bit of a tricky fight with Human Torch. I wouldn't say he was the trickiest fight that I had with Torch, but definitely one of them. Mordo, due to him being a Mystic, is a great matchup for Torch, and I was somewhat happy to see him, just because I know that Torch was going to be really good for him, so that is who I used for Mordo. Pretty straightforward fight, just got to get into the rhythm. And hopefully he throws his special attacks and isn't greedy with his power. So, Mordo, I would give it two. Next up was a fight that I was dreading more than Captain Marvel, but it actually turned out to be so much easier than Captain Marvel. Venom the Duck. Venom the Duck was actually a really fun fight with Symbiote Supreme. Granted, I was not running, nor do I have Mystic Dispersion unlocked and this fight with Symbiote Supreme was still really easy to manage, really fun. The staggers just absolutely destroyed his buff gain and the cycle that I got into with Symbiote Supreme was uh, build to a special 3, have him throw a special 1 or a special 2 to activate all his buffs, throw the special 3, rinse and repeat and the special 3 nullifies all buffs and deals direct damage so he would deal about 60,000 direct damage from the nullifying of the buffs on the special 3. So, I'm pretty sure I got VTD Dawn in 3 or 4 revives. So, that was a really nice time. I actually quite enjoyed the Venom the Duck fight. I'd also give him a 2. Following Venom the Duck is Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is just kind of a nuisance. Very annoying to get rid of all his indestructible charges, and it's really just not the best time to, you know, do 15 heavy attacks with Human Torch, or to do 30 heavy attacks with Guillotine, and you're not even dealing any damage, so, Howard, kind of a nuisance, not really that hard, just a very annoying fight to deal with in the long run. Alrighty, next up, oh, Howard I'd give a 2, and who I used for Howard was, that was another kind of all-champion fight, I used pretty much all my champions on Howard, if I'm not thinking about it, yeah, pretty much everybody was used on Howard, because he was just nothing to do with direct damage or any kind of fun interactive note, it was just get rid of the indestructible charges to deal damage, so that was an all-champion fight, mostly guillotine and Human Torch. Moving on, we had two cosmic matchups back to back. We have, first up, Hyperion. Uh, Hyperion was an interesting one. I enjoyed it with Symbiote Supreme. Again, the awakened ability for Symbiote Supreme in some of these cosmic matchups. I highly recommend it if you are able to awaken your Symbiote Supreme and you are going for a completion run of Abyss doing this path. I would recommend awakening him just because a lot of the cosmic fights, they're very buff reliant so well, what, am, what am I saying all the cosmic fights are buff reliant so being able to stop Hyperion's power gain just by placing a stagger on him from your awakened ability is nice because it could save you from him just being passive and going to the special three and in turn you stagger the power gain and gain 100 genetic potential I yeah symbiote supreme for that fight very very good time Moving on, we have the champion. The champion was at the fork in the road between Cyclops and Red Skull. Champion, very simple, straightforward fight with Symbiote Supreme. Took him down in, I believe, two revives. So, one of my best matchups with Symbiote Supreme in the Abyss was the champion. So, I was very happy to see the champion on this path and to see how well Symbiote Supreme 
was for him. After the champion, we took a left to Red Cyclops. And funny enough, Red Cyclops was one of the most enjoyable fights in the Abyss for me. I really liked the rotation that Red Cyclops has. Uh, dodging one special and parrying one special. I thought it was very, um, very good. It was a very good fight at testing your reflexes, testing your awareness of the fight. Awareness? Testing your awareness in the fight. Being able to comprehend, okay, he's green, that means parry, yellow, that means dex. How I did it was... Uh, the yellow mode, yellow is dexterity, dexterity, when you trigger dex, it's a yellow buff. So whenever he's in the yellow mode, that means dex. And the other one is self-explanatory. For this fight, I did a certain amount with guillotine. Did about 15% with guillotine. I could have gotten off more if I didn't get clipped because I messed up the rotation. But after the guillotine matchup, it took me about 4 or 5 revives with Human Torch. So, very good time against Cyclops with Human Torch. It was, again, surprisingly one of the most enjoyable fights I had in the Abyss. Moving on, back to the top of the Abyss, we have Loki. Loki was another Mystic matchup, so another Human Torch Fiesta. It was a really nice time to have another Mystic matchup. Excuse me, where? Oh, excuse me. Where Human Torch could really shine with his damage output and the potency of his smolders just absolutely melting Mystic Champions. So Loki, very easy. Give Loki a 2. I'd give most of the fights on here, like all these fights, I'd give a 2. Up to Loki. Really easy, really straightforward. Probably took me, what, 4 revives with Human Torch? It is a 5.7, so it was a little, was a little tricky. And his Abyssal ability drains your powers, so that was a little annoying. But other than that, Loki was not a bad time. Moving on, we're at the top of the map now. We have Aegon. Now, Aegon was... I was actually kind of scared of Aegon, just because I didn't know how the interaction would work with champions like Domino. But luckily, uh, I was exactly how I pictured it. Domino just absolutely obliterated him. I took him down in one revive. It was just easy game, easy life. I could have done Aegon with Symbiote Supreme. I technically speaking could have been done, but I just wanted to use Domino, get some big bleeds. I did get a 23k bleed at one point, so that was really nice. So Aegon, really easy fight with Domino. I give him a one. Super easy time. With good old Domino. Moving on to one of the final fights of the Abyss before the Collector, Invisible Woman. Invisible Woman was the fight I was scared for the most. I was not scared at the, I was not scared of the Collector. I was not scared of Iron Man or Captain Marvel more than I was scared for Invisible Woman because I did not know if I was going to be able to get by her. Now, two things were scaring me. One was the force field. The force field was the biggest part. It's a 200,000 cap force field, so you have to take off 200,000 health in order to remove the force field. Secondly, I did not know this until I witnessed it, but Invisible Woman is bugged in Abyss. She regens health without actually regening. She'll throw a special, maybe a special one, a special two, and she'll just gain percents of health back instantaneously. You can't do anything about it unless you quit out of the fight. Luckily, it only happened to me twice. The first time, I was able to deal all the damage back, but the second time, it was too too big of a regen to handle, so I had to quit out of the fight and just restart. Uh, it was worth getting rid of that revive just to not have to worry about her regening that much again. But Invisible Woman was a 3. She was very challenging, very scary to fight. Moving on to Cull Obsidian. Cull Obsidian, I'm going to give a 1. Really straightforward fight with Symbiote Supreme. I could have done it better, actually. I could have done it more in a sense of uh, the way Doctor Doom does the fight, where you just spam Special 1 and Nullify. Because I forgot Symbiote Supreme Special 1 nullifies buffs. So I could have just spam Special 1. That would have been really easy, because it would have been just super simple. Just spam Special 1, easy game. 
Special one, oh, then I get two special three, and then special one, special three, rinse and repeat. So Cole was a good kind of predecessor to the Abyss Collector. Very easy fight with Symbiote Supreme. It was a good time. Finally, we have the big baddie himself, Nameless Collector, the Abyss Collector. This fight I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to this fight ever since it got announced. And since seeing the gameplay, I am still looking forward to this fight. As long as I can get an Aegon. If I can't get an Aegon, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But hopefully I can get an Aegon this week. Abyss Collector. My only shot, my only way of completing this was just revive Human Torch with the pre-fight and get lucky. That was my only possible chance of completing the Abyss Collector. Of, of getting him down was just Human Torch, pre-fight, and go. And that's what ended up happening. I had some decent runs against him with Human Torch. There was one run where I got off almost 10%, and with a champion that's not Aegon, that's freaking crazy. So, Human Torch definitely put in a lot of work, and it really came down to the wire, but in the end, I got him down. I also had some finesse special 2 dodges, so those were those were nice. But overall, the Collector, I'm going to give him a... I'm going to have to give him a 3, just because he is the Collector, and if you don't have Aegon, it's a bad time. So, that is all I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my Abyss run, the path that I went on, I went path 1. Really good path to go if you're just looking for completion. Overall, I, I've said this on Twitter, but I'll say it in an actual video. I spent just above 5,000 units on this entire path. And without Aegon, Nick Fury, or Doctor Doom, I would say that's pretty damn impressive. So, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video of me explaining my Abyss run, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.